There's a lot of immense good that you can do with them, but they can also be used for fraud, disinformation, spam, and all the things that we already know it exists, but now amplified. There will be more of a standardized toolkit for how to erase some of sort of like lower hanging fruit risks related to generations that are inappropriate, models going off the rails in various different ways. If I'm a product builder and I'm building, building these models and building different products, there's different levels of risk I might be willing to take in terms of what I'm willing to ship to end users and the level of guardrails I need in place before I'm willing to ship. Um, how, do, how do you guys think about that and frameworks around that? Rip. So I think there's some interesting uh, there's some interesting perspectives here specifically around just like how do you sequence out the different applications that you want to go after right I feel like um, I feel like if you can really like one really nice property of these models is it's just so easy to go from zero to a hand wavy 80% quality on a wide variety of tasks for some of those tasks that's all you need and sometimes the iteration loop of having that 80% thing with humans is all you need to do to go run it over the finish line um, I feel like right now like um, the biggest opportunity we all have is is starting out by by first addressing things like that. Um, but I think that like over time, actually one of the things that Kevin said that I really liked is that there will be more of a standardized toolkit for how to erase some of the like sort of like lower hanging fruit risks related to like um, generations that are inappropriate or like models going off the rails in various different ways. I think there's another set of risks that are slightly longer term that I think are also really important to go think about. Um, and I think those are definitely uh, definitely much harder. Yeah, to build on top of that, I think there's two maybe different, also different categories, or maybe one category of risk is also, you know, adversaries in the world, right? Whenever you have, you know, product that's kind of getting enough traction, there's probably people who want to mess with you. And one thing to, you know, one example is, you know, data poisoning. So one thing, and this side I think hasn't really been, you know, borne out. There's some papers on it. But, you know, if you think about it, these models are trained on the entire whatever web crawl. So anyone can go put up a web page or put something on GitHub, and that can enter the training data. And these things are actually pretty hard to detect. So if you think from a security point of view, this is like a huge gaping hole in, in, in your system. And you know, a determined attacker could probably figure out a way to screw over um, uh, your, your, your system. And, um, and the other thing to think about is, um, is you know, misuse. Right? Um, these systems, all systems, uh, the powerful models like these are dual use technologies. There's a lot of immense good that you can do with them. But they can also be used for you know, fraud, disinformation, spam, and all the things that um, we already know it exists, but now amplified. And that's kind of a, also a scary thought. Yeah, definitely a lot of asymmetric uh, capabilities here, right? Because like just like hooking up one of these giant code models to some RL agent to just like get into systems. Like there's so many things out there that, that becomes way easier for malicious actors to do as a result. Yeah, attack is so much easier than defense. <laughs>